In this episode of The Unknown Side of WoW, we'll be taking a look at the zone of Zangra Marsh, one of the early leveling zones of Outlands, and going over a lot of the things you probably didn't notice about the zone the first time you went through, or just simply didn't know about the zone itself. Located just outside the village of Zabrajin in Zangra Marsh is an NPC named Mac Diver, the Master Engineer. Mac Diver has a quest available to engineers that has you go out and collect a whole bunch of spare parts where he can teach you how to create a moat extractor. And this NPC is most likely a reference to the TV show MacGyver, which is quite infamous because one of its characters would build crazy inventions out of seemingly random stuff. As when you complete the quest for MacDiver, he has dialogues which states, All right, now if we only had a stretchy loop, a parchment clamp, a guzzle tube, and some sticky duck ribbon, then we could really make something. Which just further enforces the reference as MacGyver, as in the TV show, some of the items he would carry around with him at all times were a Swiss army knife, duct tape, matches, a few paper clips, chewing gum, and a flashlight. Which is kind of similar to the stuff Mac Diver was mentioning. Over on the Alliance side, there's also an engineer trainer called Kaylee Smallfry, which is a reference to Kaywin Italy Fry from the TV series Firefly. In the TV show, Kaylee is depicted as a good natured, optimistic mechanic who was able to fix any problems a ship might have. So, having her reference be a gnome character, who are regularly optimistic and good-natured characters, seems pretty fitting. There's also an item you can fish out of Steam Plump Flotsam in Zangramarsh, called the Strange Engine Part, which has the flavor text, it reads like Capsin 38 on the bottom. When you accept the quest, it sends you over to Kaylee Smallfry, who remarks that the item looks like it fell out of the sky, and she'll pay you for your troubles. The flavor text and dialogues in the quest are references to the Firefly movie Serenity. Where in the movie, there's a scene where the mechanic she's based on says, and don't fly in anything with a Capsian 38 engine, they fall right out of the sky. Also, funny enough, the quest item can be looted by Horde players, but they're not actually able to receive any quest from it. In Warlords of Draenor, the entire expansion is basically an isekai anime, where your characters go to another dimension which takes place about 30 years in the past in Draenor, which is the planet where Outlands and Zangramarsh are located. And of all of the seven original zones from Outlands, only five of them are represented within Warlords of Draenor as a place you can actually go to. Zangamars was just a fully underwater zone that had maybe one or two quests that would send you there, but otherwise was completely unused. The other zone was the Netherstorm, which Blizzard talked about a lot in BlizzCon panels as being Farallon, and the zone was cut late in development, so there was a lot of promotional material about it, and it even had a budget for it on the world map. Although, there weren't really any plans for the Zangar Sea in Warlords of Draenor, other than maybe giving it a fungal whale world boss. Though, if you do ever explore underwater, you can see all the mushrooms which are very reminiscent of the Outlands version of it, even if a lot of these mushrooms and spores are supposed to be highly toxic and dangerous. In lore, Zangar Marsh is an absolutely terrible place to be in as we get a nice description of it from the Illidan novel from Maiev's point of view, where she says, Zangramarsh was a monstrous place, a boggy fell lint filled with alien horrors, and then goes on to say in a different part of the book, She had thought Hellfire Peninsula was a terrible place, but this was far worse. The entranceway to Outland was a desert hell filled with fell orcs and hideous creatures, but Zangramarsh was something darker and stranger. It was hot and humid and dank. Huge mushroom trees, larger than the towering oaks of Ashenvale, blocked out the sun. Manta-like flyers flitted through their shadows, and things part jellyfish, part alien monster floated through the air. True, there were fewer orcs, but there were other menaces. After smashing through the host of Ravagers, the Watchers had been attacked by a giant ambulatory fungus. They had been ambushed by ogres and swarmed by huge stinging insects. She had lost Colia to tiny grubs that had emerged from her flesh after she had been stung, the vermin eating her eyes and her brain, another death that ultimately could be laid at the feet of Illidan. There's also some other parts where she mentions that the spores in the air constantly grow fungus on their skin, and that only carefully cleaning and the use of healing magic could take it off. As in game, Zangra Marsh is just a neat looking leveling zone and doesn't feel anywhere near as dangerous as it's described in the book. So it was actually kind of a shock to read this segment, to see how dangerous it's supposed to be. In three different spots in Zangramarsh, there are three NPCs which are references to tissue paper and blowing your nose, as spores in the air are responsible for a lot of allergies. So it's appropriate that a lot of the spore-like creatures in the zone have parody names based on these things. More specifically, the NPCs, Gesundheit, which sounds like Gesundheit, 
which is a polite thing you can say to someone after they sneeze. There's also Kaninix, which sounds like Kleenex, a popular brand of tissue paper. And finally, Tissue, which literally just sounds like tissue. Speaking of tissue, currently this NPC offers a quest called Bring Me a Shrubbery, and has another quest called Bring Me Another Shrubbery. Both of these are references to the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail, in which the characters are asked by the Knights of Knee in order to go out and fetch a shrubbery for them as part of a quest. O oh, Knights of Knee, we have brought you your shrubbery. May we go now? It is a good shrubbery. I like the laurels particularly. But there is one small problem. And after they return with a shrubbery, they're told to go out and collect another shrubbery. Located just to the east of the spawning glen is an NPC sporling named Fossen. This NPC is most likely a reference to the spawn of Fashan, which is a tabletop RPG that was released in 1981, which is infamous for being absolutely terrible. As the Sporling Fossen has a quest related to Spawning Glen, in which you have to go help the Sporling spawns, and seeing as the NPC's name is very similar to Fashan and heavily involved with spawns, it's a pretty easy relation to make. The RPG it references is best described by a quote from Lauren Stick's review of it in 1982's edition of Dragon. Hilariously bad fantasy system, legendary amongst RP game designers as the epitome of cliché amateurish FRP games. Some maintain that it's so bad it must be a hoax. The rulebook indicates a bizarrely complex character creation system, painfully cumbersome combat rules, and monster descriptions with names like Makel, Fochtlum, Finkroar, and Raltmulrut. Seeing as the names of the monsters in the spawn of Fashan were so weird and random, it definitely fits the Sporling Fussin and most other naming conventions. The captured gnome is an NPC located in the Horde-controlled village of Zabrajin. The NPC will offer repair services for Horde players and even sell a couple of engineering items. And while the gnome is going about its business, banging on the anvil, he will occasionally be taunted by some of the passing by guards telling him to work faster, to which he'll reply in common. Although, Horde players won't be able to understand what he's saying. If an Alliance player is nearby and spying on the village, they will be able to see the gnome is saying, please don't kill me. There's also some dialogue where a guard will tell him that if he's no good at fixing things, then he'll be good for eating. To which he'll also reply, either, I don't understand you, or please don't beat me. Now, the captured gnome in this village could be a reference to how gnomes are treated in WoW Machinima, where there was a large emphasis in early WoW Machinimas to always punt gnomes or use them as the butt of many jokes. Although if it's not a reference, then it's just a pretty dark scene of a captured gnome who's just scared for his life. 